Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the 2023 microeconomics exam. This is question number one from set two. In order to do well on this question, you should be through unit six. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. Now this question starts off with Anderson Company. They are a typical firm in a constant cost, perfectly competitive industry, and they are producing good G. Anderson Company is also currently making an economic profit. For part A, we are asked what must be true about the relationship between accounting profit and economic profit if there are both implicit and explicit costs of production. In order to answer this question, it's helpful to know that accounting profit is total revenue minus explicit costs. Economic profit, on the other hand, is total revenue minus both explicit and implicit costs. That means when implicit costs exist, accounting profit will always be greater than economic profit. That leads us to our answer here, accounting profit is greater than economic profit. And if you state that, you get your first point. Now for part B, we have to draw side-by-side -side graphs for both the perfectly competitive market for good G and a graph for the firm, Anderson Company. We have to show the equilibrium price and quantity and the firm's price and quantity, as well as have the company's economic profit shaded in completely. We're going to start off with our market graph. We have to label our axes, quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. We have a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve, mark the equilibrium price, PM, and the equilibrium quantity, QM. And that gives you your first point on this graph. For the second point, we're going to take that market price, move on over to that firm graph. That becomes the firm's price and a horizontal marginal revenue and demand. I also mark mine average revenue and price as well. And that's your second point on this graph. The third point comes from adding in a marginal cost curve, finding the MR equals MC quantity, dropping down and marking that profit maximizing quantity, QF. And that's your third point on this graph. The fourth point comes from adding in the average total cost curve below the demand curve at the profit maximizing quantity of QF. The average total cost curve must also be at its minimum point when it intersects the marginal cost curve. The final point for this graph comes from shading in the profit completely. You find that from the gap between the demand curve and the average total cost curve at the profit maximizing quantity of QF. And it's that rectangle right there. And if that's shaded incorrectly, you get your last point for part B. For part C, we have to assume that this market and firm move to a long run equilibrium. After the change, we have to mark the equilibrium price and quantity as well as the firm price and quantity. Now remember, perfectly competitive markets have low barriers to entry. That means firms are going to break even in the long run. And since firms are currently earning economic profit, more firms are going to enter this market. That's going to shift the supply in the market to the right until the firms break even. And firms will break even when that marginal revenue and demand shift all the way down to the minimum of the average total cost curve. Show that all out on your graph. The first point's going to be from shifting the supply curve to the right and showing a lower price and quantity in the market. That should be labeled P2 and Q2. And then we take that new price all the way over to the market. That price should now be at the minimum of the average total cost curve. A little note, it is below the profit box that we had before. And we have our new profit maximizing price labeled P star for the firm and the profit maximizing quantity for the firm labeled Q star. You get one point for the changes in the market and a second point for the changes in the firm graph. For part D, we are told to assume that the production of good G provides benefits to third parties. Given this situation, we are asked if the market quantity will be equal to, greater than, or less than the allocatively efficient quantity. And we have to explain. Now what's being described here is a positive externality in production. That's because there are benefits to third parties as a result of the production of this good. That means that the marginal private cost is going to be greater than the marginal social cost. If we take a look at a graph for a positive externality in production, we can see what it looks like. There we see our marginal private cost is greater than our marginal social cost. We have QO is our allocatively efficient quantity where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. And we can see that the market quantity where marginal private cost equals marginal private benefit is less than the allocatively efficient outcome. And that's why we have that triangle of deadweight loss. So based on what we saw on that graph, we can now answer the question less than because when there is a positive externality in production, the marginal social cost will be greater than the marginal private cost. And that means the marginal social benefit will be greater than the marginal social cost at the market quantity. And if you have an answer something like that, you get your point. 
Just make sure you have made clear your understanding of the positive externality and production graph when you explain your answer. For part D, double I, we are asked if the government takes action to correct for this externality, will the government's action increase, decrease, or not change total economic surplus? And we have to explain. Now to answer this question, it's helpful to remember that a per unit subsidy is the action that should be taken when we have a positive externality in production. And that will decrease the marginal private cost down towards the marginal social cost on the graph. That will then increase the quantity produced. That causes both consumer and producer surplus to increase and dead weight loss will be eliminated. So if we combine all of that into our answer here, increase because the government action will cause the market to produce the allocatively efficient quantity where MSB equals MSC and dead weight loss will be eliminated. And if you have an answer something like that, you get your last point. And there you have it. Those are the answers to the 2023 microeconomics exam, question number one from set two. If you still need more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.